r slash too afraid to ask. Luxembourg's finest says. Have race relations in the US gotten worse in the last 15 years, or was it the same, and I was just too young to notice? When I was in middle school and high school, we weren't divided, like we are now. My school was incredibly diverse, and we all got along. You still had prejudice here and there, the occasional bullies being dicks, but nothing like now. Now it seems like every owns on edge, they have it out for one another, finger on the trigger, like something's always about to go down. Or maybe in chronically online. I don't know. I feel like the media did this. It feels like people are so much more prejudiced and quick to anger nowadays than they were when I was younger. It's as if we regressed in some ways, and it really amplified throughout the 2010s. For example, 15 years ago, I'd never imagine that in 2023, there would be groups of people advocating for POC-only spaces or events on college campuses, but now you hear more. And more about it. And I'm a POC, and I still think this is wrong. Didn't we have whole history class lessons dedicated to when people were separated by race slash ethnicity, and why it was wrong? Edit, I'm not just talking about racism and prejudice against black Americans or white Americans. It seems like a lot of people in the comments think this post only focuses on black vs white. I'm talking all forms of racism and prejudice, anti-black anti-white anti-hispanic, anti-semitism, anti-asian, and so on. Edit hash 2, not saying prejudice and racial slash ethnic tensions didn't exist 10 to 15 years ago. They certainly did, but it feels like it's gotten worse now. Edit hash 3, maybe I should phrase the question differently. I'm not asking if relations are the worst they've ever been. Of course we're doing better than 1955. I'm asking if they're worse than they were 15 years ago. Hope this clears it. Nervous Garbage 5855 says. Social media wasn't around then either. PK underscore Ocknell says. This is a great point. I think people vastly underestimate how much more aware and how quickly we get information compared to 10 over 20 years ago. Mother underscore Sand underscore 6336 says. And of the cynical motivations of those algorithms bumping engaging content. Between good ol' capitalism and psyops from foreign anti-democracy actors, social media networks addict us to agitation and angry argument. Ferrum underscore artifacts says. I think it's just louder now. Cultured underscore banana underscore slug says. Yep. Especially post-Trump. He made racism patriotic again. K1C6 says. The racism has always been there, but we now live in an era where racism can be captured and recorded on people's phones and instantly shared around the world. Prior to that we only heard about it randomly happening on the news, or in the newspapers. Athos45678 says. Unless your skin color isn't beige. Then you probably hear about it a lot. NPMFNR says. You were too young to notice. Ick 5 Shine Ablafert says. I know for me, I was also too sheltered, and social media wasn't a thing. At that time I was a white teenager living in the suburbs, and while through sports I had friends of all ethnicities and backgrounds, sports really can be a great unifier at times, I did not know the struggle they went through, because it was just not something that people talked about. Segregation and racism were things we learned about in history class, not current events right. At least that's why naive me thought at the time. Social media really has done a good job at bringing things to the forefront. Unfortunately progress has not happened as quick as we would all like it to. R slash too afraid to ask. Magnetic danger Niddle says. How do disabled individuals fly? It just dawned on me that I fly quite a bit for work and I have literally never seen someone with extreme mobility issues slash autistic slash etc. On the same flight. About the only thing I have noticed is older individuals who transfer from the jetway to walk to their seats. 
Google Foo says powered wheelchairs can transfer to specific standard width wheelchairs. But. Then what? If I had amputated legs, does the airline expect me to drag myself down the aisle to my seat? What about severely autistic slash etc? Individuals that may be extra vocal, or need to move around a lot. There has to be situations where people with special needs require surgery slash etc. And have to fly. I know there are laws protecting rights for people to fly. Is it just such a nuisance that nobody bothers? Remillusner says. They will transfer the individual to an airplane standard wheelchair to get them on the plane, and I believe they will transfer them to their seat as well. Transfer as in humans physically lift and place the person. Same on deb boarding. That's also why people with disabilities are allowed to board first. World Worm says. I got off a plane behind a guy struggling with a heavy case and some sort of brace on. Everyone was just kind of ignoring him slash going around. I caught up with him as he got to the stairs. I offered to carry his case, frick, me it was heavy. We talked as I carried the rockery, or whatever he had in there. He thanks me, and explained he had a broken back, and was going to see his daughter, a wedding I think. So to answer your question, with great difficulty it seems. You can get wheelchairs, but not on every flight, you can pre-book your wheelchair, and they can do special security arrangements. C. Epson says. I assume when you say severely autistic you're referring mainly to autistic people diagnosed with either autism level 2 to 3 as they have higher support needs. I cannot speak for them as I'm autistic, but I'm diagnosed with autism level 1. Basically I'm classified as an autistic individual with lower support needs slash verbal. I can however tell you some accommodations me and my other autistic friends have when being on flights as it's still a horrible experience. I myself always have a stuffed animal with me in the open as to get some sort of safety blanket and to try and put off any possible meltdown for as long as possible. I never fly alone, always with a friend or parent as I cannot deal with both the information I would need to take in alone and all the stimuli on a flight. I always have headphones with me that can cancel out some of the sounds and I make sure I have things I can stim with on me. Basically I do anything to keep the inevitable meltdown as far away into the future as humanly possible. I do also have anxiety and other diagnoses, but they aren't relevant in this situation, which can make it harder. That's why I never go to a new airport alone, nor do I try to sit in seats I haven't sat in before, I do my best to sit either in the middle seat or window. My other autistic friend basically do the same thing, but she has a pretty bad fear of flying too, so she takes her anxiety meds along with some of her sleeping meds that also works as anxiety medication before she goes on a flight. There's a lot of support you can get from the airport staff from what I understand to and there tends to be a lot of preparation before anyone with a disability, be it by the staff or by the individual themselves, before they go on flights which may look very different depending on the person. Even when they go on flights such as time, can go into the planners to avoid as much stress inducing factors as. Mottener says. They ride with the luggage. R slash too afraid to ask. Herdiga D21 says. Have you ever forgot to take into account your ass slash hips when choosing a pants size? My waist is a 38, but my ass is a 42, you know what I mean? I'm due BTW, don't. Want no creeps in my DMS. Ahagat says. Being a dude doesn't stop the creeps. We ladies like fat asses too. Chili919 says. Ass slash hips. No. But I forgot that my balls may sit different in the pants when I sit. Hurtful experience, wouldn't recommend. Ineffable 7980X says. This is why I try everything on before I leave the store. Person or creep says. This is always an issue for me due to my frame, so I try everything on before I buy. Real Bosch Vera Curve says. 
No but I forget to account for my car size all the time. Sushiapath17 says. When you've had curvy features your whole life, you. Learned early. Voodoo69692001 says. There's this thing called changing rooms. Picklerick4069 says. Yee, cause I've been training, and now this dump truck won't fit in all pants. Last time I went shopping, was a real adventure. Drugstore underscore downer says. No. I just make it all fit. Equivalent snap says. Do what women do, and get pants that have stretch or sweat pants. Sunflower Jorad says. All the time, I need pants that fit my thighs otherwise they don't fit. Alternatively, I also have this problem with dresses. Dresses that fit my bust are too big, and ones that flatter my figure are too small for my bust. Close the risk am I tell you. Offgrid21 says. Dude with a bud i.e. Godzillaork says. I'm a 32 waist, and 32 waists never fit, they always end up loose. And the next size down, always too tight. Frick every pair of jeans maker out there. That's all for this video thank you for watching please subscribe.